Before we get into today's Tennessee Titans mailbag, if you enjoy these where we answer your questions or ideas on the Tennessee Titans, well, show it by liking today's video. That way it tells the bosses at Chat Sports that, yes, this is something you, the people, enjoy. If you want more of them, like today's video right now. Today's Tennessee Titans mailbag is exactly what it sounds like. We answer your questions that have come in through the community page or in the comment section for those of you who have used hashtag Titans, just like William Craft 09 did. He wants to know, do you think Derrick Henry can get back to having over a 2,000-yard season in 2022? Now, Henry did that in 2020, and his pace wasn't that far off in 2021 before he ended up getting hurt and missing a bunch of the back end of the season amid the oh he's ahead of schedule even though he was never actually ahead of schedule from a pure pace perspective the difference wasn't that great 126.7 yards per game versus 117 but an extra game had he been at that same pace you know he would he would have gotten there I'll say this though I do not want Derrick Henry to get 2,000 yards I would like to lessen his workload a little bit not saying don't give him the football, but I would love nothing more than to have a bunch of games in the fourth quarter where Tennessee's up big. And instead of having to lean on Derrick Henry for an extra 5 to 10 carries, whatever that number ends up being, I can take that off his plate. Even if that's just four or five games over the season, that adds up and can extend his career. So I expect Derrick Henry to be a dominant football player, averaging around five yards per carry and blowing by the 1,000-yard mark but I would also like just a little bit less overall workload. So I don't think Derrick Henry gets to 2,000 yards. I think he'll get well over 1,000. I think he'll get fairly close to it, but I actually want that workload down a little bit. What do you guys think? Over or under 2,000 rushing yards for Derrick Henry? Type in O for over, i.e. more than that, or U for under, i.e. less. From Mark Jones next up here, could you see the Titans re-signing Julio Jones? He already knows the offense and would be able to be the number one option at wide receiver instead of trying to be a number two like last year. He wasn't able to adjust. He is used to being the guy. It's a mindset. Tighten up. I get where you're coming from on the mindset side of things, and I don't know if the Titans and Julio are in any type of like bad relationship, how things ended on that front. But I do think it is very telling that in a year span where Julio Jones goes from being premier receiver to only getting a second round pick in, ex uh, pick in exchange to now having no known interest really in him. He's been linked kind of speculatively to the Colts because of Matt Ryan now there. Julio Jones, I think in reality, can't be a number one anymore. Now you will probably see a boost in production if you feed him like a number one. But he's not that guy anymore. I think over with two years of very clear and substantial regression amid injury, I don't think if you re-sign Julio Jones, you want him to be your number one guy. He could be a nice veteran piece for you. And like many older players with no special teams value, once they're not there anymore in the same way, it just tends to fall apart pretty quickly. So if he wants to sign a cheap one-year deal, vet men, I'm not going to say no, assuming that relationship is still in a good place. But honestly, I want to give Robert Woods, I want to give Traylon Burks more touches than Julio. So sure, if he's cheap, but he's not going to be the number one. That's just, I don't think he has it in him anymore, quite simply. So what do you think? Would you bring back Julio Jones to Tennessee? Let's say it's a cheap one-year deal. Why for yes or N for no? This is going to be the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad break comes on YouTube, that's perfect timing. Head down there and let me know. From Cody Oldoff, I think I'm pronouncing that last name that last name right. If I'm not, I'm sorry. Thoughts on signing Carlos Dunlap for edge depth and Quan Alexander for linebacker depth. Two good names. We'll break them both down for you, Cody. First up is Quan, who has not been the premier guy he was when he first got the bag from the Niners a couple of years ago as the overall the high-paid linebacker contracts in recent years been really bad across the NFL outside of a few exceptions. The Titans actually already have one of those guys, the former high-paid linebacker who flamed out with his old team in Zach Cunningham. I don't hate the idea of adding another veteran presence. A lot of it comes down to the health of Monty Rice. If Rice is going to be fine for week one or even week two or three, 
Sure, uh, you know, I'm fine at that point. If he's not going to be healthy coming off that Achilles injury, I think Alexander is a great name to consider. Offers some speed, some weak side linebacker ability. In a fairly deep linebacker free agency class, I think Tennessee can afford to wait either way. Carlos Dunlap, meanwhile, is a very intriguing option. Very quiet around the potential market on that front for him. Uh, I know there's been some some buzz in terms of what's going to happen on that front. The Panthers brought him in for a visit, but I have heard nothing about that since then. Uh, so I would assume that means things didn't go perfectly for whatever reason. Uh, but that's where we're at right now on Dunlap. Now, he's been productive from a sack per, uh, perspective and a quarterback hits perspective. I don't love his fit in a 3-4 scheme. Now, with that said, I think you can use him as a situational pass rusher. When you go to your nickel fronts, you're not really being a 3-4 edge anymore. You're just being an edge rusher. So Dunlap can definitely contribute. I think they want to unleash Rashad Weaver a little bit more. And Ole Adenai offers some special teams value. And if you're going to carry fifth or five edges, three and four, especially four and five, got to be special teams helpers. And that's not Dunlap. So he falls in that weird category of he's a good football player still. But he's got to be a higher-ranking member than other players in terms of depth chart because he doesn't bring the typical back end of the depth chart traits and roles. So when it comes to free agency, name a player you want to sign. I am really intrigued by the Carlos Dunlap one, not one I thought about for Tennessee, but I'm down with it. I want to hear from you guys. Let me know a player you want to sign in free agency. The Titans t-shirt combo pack is still available. Get yours today at chatsports.com slash Titans combo. That link will be in the comment section and in the description of today's video. This deal does not last forever. It tends to sell out very, very quickly. So if you haven't already gotten going, check the comment section and the description. Buy your two t-shirt combo pack for just 30 bucks. You're not going to find a better deal than this one. Chatsports.com slash Titans combo takes you right in to the Fanatic site for that particular item. From MPS Tricks, think we could get Adam Humphreys. He is decent at what he does, and we could snag him and make a deal for cheap too. So I do think he is very available. And of course, Titans fans know him. He is what we call a Titans legend, having spent two years with the organization 2019 and 2020. He did not play that well for them, unfortunately. He is a slot only with some punt return value. I do think he would be cheap. But I think he only makes sense, in kind of like the whole Cole Beasley conversation we had earlier this week, if Tennessee decides, mm, you know what, Kyle Phillips is not ready. In that scenario, I do think someone like Humphreys as a veteran slot could make some sense. I also think we've seen by far the best of him. I would have low expectations, probably around his 2019 campaign from over the entire season, maybe a little bit more in terms of the level of production. Sports and Dorks Productions had a trade idea, by the way. Titans get Robbie Anderson, and the Panthers get a second and third round pick. Now, for starters, that is a lot to give up for Robbie Anderson. Frankly, I think it's too much. I think one of those picks is probably still a little bit on the high end. Now, I do appreciate you giving up good value because oftentimes we see trade ideas in which it's, here's our garbage for your treasure, right? Not the case here. That's a pretty big offer. The Panthers, however, did restructure Robbie Anderson this offseason, who also restructured the spelling of his name, by the way. The Titans would only owe him the vet minimum, so super affordable. But that also means little savings from a cap perspective for Carolina, less appealing for them to make a trade. A second and a third, they would do it. I just don't think he's worth it. Uh, I think Anderson overall is more of a 700, 800 yard type of production receiver. We've seen moments of that production beyond that 2020 when he had 95 catches for 1,000 yards. But what's also troubling, and this is definitely in large part due to the quarterback play, uh, the average has dropped significantly from 15 to 9.8 in 2019 to 2021. But I think in Tennessee, he would fill that role of vertical speedster. I'm, I'm just not moving a second and a third for him. That's, that's way too much for me. I want you guys to name a player, of course, in the comment section, who you want to go trade for. I'd say keep it somewhat realistic, but that's eh, a mailbag. Have some fun. Drop that name for me in the comments. 
from Mike Rennie. Why is everyone so worried about right tackle? Raiden's was drafted in the second round for a reason. He is a good player. A couple different questions on the offensive line. Mike's was more positive, so I picked that one. The reason why there is some concern is he wasn't good last year. Uh, in a very small sample size, two sacks, three hits, three hurries, and a pretty mediocre PFF run grade, that's not great. And the reason why it's, yes, he was a second-round pick, but Isaiah Wilson was a first-round pick, right? Uh, Rashawn Evans was a first-round pick. Adoree Jackson was a first-round pick, who was fine overall. Uh, Taewon Taylor was a third-round pick. Kevin Dodd was an early second-round pick. Now, some of those were the previous regime, but just because a player was an early-round pick doesn't mean they're going to be good. They are talented. There is unquestionably upside, heavy upside involved with Dylan Raidens, but he hasn't proved he's good yet at the NFL level. Now, with that said, I'm going to start him. I am going to give him every chance to show he is the good player that I think most Titans fans expect him to be. But I still need to see it first. So I get the concern, and I also understand why you, why you, you Mike, are, are thinking, hey, he's going to be the guy. Give him the shot this year. If he struggles, you know, we can revisit next year. But unless Raidens doesn't win the job, I'm going to assume he's going to be just fine at the right tackle spot. Folks, if you have not already, please subscribe to us here on Tennessee Titans today. We've got all the coverage you could ever want on Tennessee from news, rumors, trades, in-season, off-season, mailbags, of course, like this one. So if you haven't already, hit that big red button right now.